All right, so this SQ5 does have the air suspension. It's premium plus. The air suspension comes in the S Sport package. This particular car is quantum gray and it has a red interior. So what I usually do is start in the back of the car. Start with the tailgate area. Now, I didn't show this on my Q5 video, but underneath here, there's a button to open the tailgate and the car is keyless entry. So as long as you have the key on you, just press this button and the tailgate will lift up. Now up top here, there is a button to close the tailgate and a button to lock the tailgate. Press this button to close it. And then I will also show you how to use your foot. So as long as the car is not running and you have the key on you, all you do is put your foot up under the center of the bumper, take it away, and this will both close and open the tailgate. Now in the tailgate area, all the Q5 and SQ5 models come with the crossbars that you can put on the roof. This particular car has the all-weather floor mats installed, so these are the carpet mats. And then down here is the all-weather cargo mat. This particular car also has a cargo cover that you can pull across here and lock in place. You can pull that back up there. Now in the back here, it's important, uh, there's two handles. Each one of these handles, if you pull on these handles, these seats will release so that you can push them forward. That way you don't have to go into the rear doors to do that. The air suspension uh, was an important thing to mention because this button back here does allow you when the tailgate's open to lower the back of the car. And this actually makes it easier to load things in. It takes a few seconds, but the car drops down. One last thing in the back of the car is the buttons here. You can save the tailgate in a certain position or to open only open to a certain height. The way you do that is that you partially close it to the height that you want it to only open to, and you would hold this button in until the car makes a beep and the lights flash. And then that will save in place. And one more thing, under this cargo mat, there's a handle. It's a little tough to get into here. But underneath there is the inflatable spare tire, and there is an electric pump under there as well. Now one more thing on the outside of the car is the keyless entry. So as long as you have the key in your pocket or in your purse, to unlock the car, you put your hand on the inside of the handle, and it unlocks, and then you can open the door. To lock the car, you touch the divot on the, on the uh, handle, and it will lock the car but the doors have to be, of course, closed all the way, and it locks the car. So we'll open up the back. In the back of the car, there's a handle down here. This will allow you to recline the seats, or to have them obviously sit straight up, and then you can also fold them down. And I'll show you what that looks like. <clears throat> so the seats fold pretty close to flat. And then once we put this back up here, with this nice red interior. In the back of the car, you have a vent control to open and close the vents. There's a temperature control here to move the temperature up and down. That's a digital display. Two charging ports, USB, and a 12 volt outlet as well. And then you can see the all weather mats down here. Moving to the front of the vehicle and inside the driver's door. One thing I'll mention is this, this box here. This is your blind spot warning. This will light up if somebody is in your blind spot, or it'll give you an advanced warning depending on how quickly they're coming up behind you. We can also see the carbon atlas and inlays, which are real nice. Down here you have your child door locks, your window controls, which are one touch, up and down, mirror control here, left and right adjustment, bottom right icon is for heating, bottom left will fold the mirrors in if you're in the car and it's running. Then you have a tailgate release, which also closes the tailgate. And this car has the bang of the Wolfson sound system. There's a hood release down here. You have your seat adjustments here and a lumbar adjustment here. Now on the inside of the car, also on the driver's door is your memory seats and mirrors. So what you do is once you're in the car, you get everything adjusted. You press the set button and then either one or two. And that will save your position for your seats and mirrors. If anything gets misaligned for any reason, all you have to do is hold the one or two button to readjust it, and you can save two settings, one and two, for each key that you have in the vehicle, which is also a good time to bring up the fact that any settings you adjust 
in the car will save to the key that you use to unlock and start the car with. So keep that in mind in case you switch keys or use a different key. Things are going to be set a little differently in the car than maybe what you would like to have them set to. Down here you have the headlight switch. Right now they're on auto. You have off, auto, parking lights, headlights. You have an adjustment for your interior lighting here. This pops out. You can turn it up, turn it down. Fog lights, front fog lights, rear fog lights. Bottom left stalk here is your cruise control. So once you're at the speed you want, you hit the set button. You can move your speed up and down, which will show you in the... Uh, it won't show me now because I'm not driving, but it'll show you in the virtual cockpit here what your speed is set to. To turn it off, you push this forward, and then to resume, you pull it towards you. Now it'll show me right down. Oh, now it went away. Right down here is where it will show your speed. Left stalk here is for your turn signals and high beams. This also has the automatic high beams in the car, so those should say auto now if they don't say auto you will have to essentially just push this knob forward or this stock I should say forward and they turn it on auto push it forward again turns them off pull it towards you just flash the high beams until you let go the right stock is for your wipers so if you pull this down one time it wipes the windshield once first level up is automatic then you have low and high button here is for the rear wipers and the automatic wipers are also adjustable in terms of sensitivity so this would be the least sensitive and this would be the most sensitive that's what I usually leave it on to wash the windshield you pull this stock towards you to wash the rear window you push it away and one last thing there's a handle on it here if you pull this down that allows you to adjust the steering wheel and then you pull it back up to lock it in place this car has paddle shifters to shift down, shift up if you're in manual mode. Now to adjust the virtual cockpit, all your controls are on the left side of the steering wheel here. So you have four primary screens that you can view. Let me close the door. Close the door all the way so that works. Okay, so you have the vehicle information screen, which is, this is what it looks like. If you press the right and left button, that's how you navigate between your different screens. So this one's for the radio. Push it one more. You go to your phone if your Bluetooth phone is connected. Then you will be able to see your previous calls and contacts. One more brings up your map. And then you're back to vehicle information. Scroll wheel here allows you to scroll up and down through what you're looking at. And you can click this in to select something. Which on the vehicle information screen you can actually select anything on here. But it will show your consumption, short term memory, long term memory, energy consumers. Driver's assistance won't show anything because this car doesn't have the driver's assistance package. And traffic signs, that's part of the traffic sign recognition along with the driver's assistance. As we go up through here, I'll show you also, if you're on the music screen, you can scroll up and down through your channels with the scroll wheel and then you just click to select, it changes the channel. All the new cars come with three free months of Sirius XM. The, uh, Bluetooth phone screen works the same way with scrolling up and down and selecting. Your navigation, if you use a scroll wheel, you can zoom out, zoom in, whatever you need to do. One more thing, there is an OK button here. This will bring up a menu associated with your navigation, music, Bluetooth, vehicle information, whichever, whichever ones you're in. So we press that button, we bring up some options for navigation on the uh, radio screen it brings up options for radio which is limited on the virtual cockpit and there's a back button just to go back one important point is on the vehicle information screen if you press the OK button it will allow you to adjust your additional display which is what shows up here so right now it's the date and time if I click on this it gives you other things that you can set it to which I'll show you depends on what you like to view there Reset values will allow you to reset your consumption, your short-term memory, which if you wanted to reset the short-term memory, you would do the same thing. Long-term memory, we can hit OK, reset values, and that clears that. 
One more thing is the view button, which changes the view. It gives you the infotainment view, which makes everything, your gauge is smaller and then makes your center screen bigger here so you can see more information. So now everything is much larger. The best thing for this is the map here. The map is very large, which is also uh, actually pretty awesome, pretty helpful. It's easier to look slightly down than it is to look over at that screen if you're using the navigation. Put this back to here. On the right side, we have the asterisk button here. If you click on this, the car will give you options of what you can set it to. The nav button repeats the previous navigation instruction. The phone button will answer or hang up the phone call. The voice button here, you click on this and the car will beep. That starts your voice prompts, which will allow you to maybe search for a uh, contact or to call somebody or to put in a destination. You have a volume button or volume knob here. If you click this in, it mutes it, mutes your radio or your media. Left and right will allow you to skip tracks or change your radio stations up and down. And there is a um, trip mileage reset button here. You click this, reset your trip mileage. One thing to note is the only way you'll see your odometer is to be on the vehicle information screen. It'll always show up here. All right, now we'll go to the climate control. It's down here. This is a temperature sensor. You don't have to worry about that. Heated seats are high, medium, low, and then off. Same thing for the passenger side. Temperature for the driver and passenger on each side. Automatic fan speed if you click this in for driver and passenger. You have your defrost front and rear here. Then you have air recirculation and an off button to turn the whole system off. The silver buttons on the left and the right adjust your airflow direction. So you can have, you know, feet, feet and defrost, defrost, uh, the front vents here and then the front and feet vents. You have an air conditioner toggle for on, off, and max. Adjust your fan speed up and down. Sync allows you to synchronize everything to the driver's control. Three zone, if somebody else touches something or you change it to three zone, then the back seat and passenger can be adjusted separately. And then set rear allows you to adjust the rear seat temperature. Down here on this row, you have your drive select. Now the drive select on the SQ5 with the air suspension is pretty awesome. All you have to do is click the up and down button once. That brings up your drive select screen. And then you have different driving modes. So lift and off road will lift the car all the way up. And then it also will allow you to pretty much have the best, I want to say, handling for being off road. And you'll also hear and feel the uh, air suspension lift the car up. Also turns off the sensors, so the car's not freaking out. All road mode lifts the car up somewhat, and it's pretty similar to off-road mode, but it's not really meant for like super off-roading. It's more meant for like trails and stuff. Comfort mode keeps the suspension raised up a little bit, so it's softer. Also softens the suspension, your steering feel, and makes the acceleration of the vehicle less aggressive. Auto is like a normal driving mode. And then dynamic lowers the car all the way. It also stiffens up the steering, makes the acceleration more aggressive. It'll put the car in uh, sport transmission mode. And then on the individual setting here, this little plus button next to there means you can press this right button and bring up options for that. You can set your engine and transmission settings separately, your air suspension settings separately. Dynamic steering, which this car also has, you can set that. Your sport differential, which is part of the S-Sport package, you can change the adjustment of that, which is uh, the sport differential allows the car to put almost all the power to the back, back wheels. And then you can also adjust the engine sound. That's another thing, if you don't want the car to be too loud, all you gotta do is put it in comfort mode and it'll quiet the exhaust down. Uh, usually I just leave the car in auto mode, but it depends on your preference. Once you have set something, you don't have to press like any button to select, you can just let it go. The next button on this row is the auto start stop, start stop button to turn it off. Click this, red light comes on, it means it's off. If you don't like the car temporarily shutting off at a stop sign or a stop light or in traffic, you just press that button. Traction control button to turn that off, which allows you to do uh, launch control as well. And launch control, put your foot on the brake and push on the gas, 
it'll rev up the motor so that you can launch the car if you wanted to do some uh, maybe some racing this button brings up the back of camera the parking sensors and that's what that looks like or you can turn it off that way as well if you press that button hill descent control allows you to go down a very steep hill and go down there uh, down the steep hill very slowly and actually control it this button turns off this screen if you don't want it on down here we have the start stop button we have a USB port 12 volt outlet we have got the MMI control in a second your transmission to go into drive you press your shift lock pull this towards you now it's in drive you pull it push it forward one goes into neutral push it all the way forward it goes into reverse and then again you can press P for park parking brake pull this up to engage it put your foot on the brake and push down to disengage it also when you're in uh, drive if you pull this towards you again it'll go into sport transmission mode and if you push this over to the right it'll go into manual mode so you can shift the car yourself there's also a volume knob here this volume knob allows you to move the volume up and down if you click on this it mutes you can also like slide this left and right to skip tracks without actually turning it and if you hold it down it completely turns off the MMI system there's a wireless charger here and if you open this you have cup holders and then this uh, armrest here you lift this up there's a USB port and an auxiliary port in there and you close this down this will also slide out so it's adjustable you can also pull it up slightly and it'll lock in place and then to get it to go all the way back down you just got to open it and close it and then we'll move along to the MMI controls here. So basically these silver buttons represent your primary screens that you'll use the most. Radio is this screen here. Media is your media screen for Bluetooth, CDs, DVDs. Nav map. First we'll bring up your map. Press it again. It brings up where you would enter a destination. And then the telephone brings up your Bluetooth phone screen and to connect your phone to the Bluetooth, all you have to do is click on connect mobile device and make sure that your phone's Bluetooth is on. You click on find new devices, click on next. It'll search. Once you find your phone, you select it. It'll ask you if the pin in the car and the pin on your phone match, which you would hit pair on your phone and you would hit yes on the MMI. And then your phone will ask you if you want to sync your contacts at which point if you do you just hit yes and then you can search for your contacts through the car and I'm just going to back out here now when we go to radio change your radio stations you just scroll this up and down scroll up and down you push it in to select it'll change your channel media once you have your phone connected uh, will play music through your phone if you're using Bluetooth, if you have a CD or DVD in the CD or DVD player, which is in the glove box, it'll play CDs and DVDs. The nav map screen, if you're on the map, you can use you can scroll that wheel there to zoom in and out. If you click on the nav map destination, you could use this to type if you wanted to, which there's multiple ways to type. I think I'll get into that in a second. And then uh Basically, what you need to know is with this, if you're in a if you're in the map, it zooms. If you're in a menu like this, it just allows you to make selections. One thing to note is there's a tablet like little icon there on the left, and a plus sign on the right. Left one represents a menu, and the right one corresponds to the options. Two ways to get there: one is to press either this button for the left, and this one for the right, or you can slide this to the left and right without twisting it so if you slide it to the left it'll bring up a menu related to what you're in which right now we're in radio this gives us access to our presets Sirius XM FM and AM uh, radio stations and if we slide this to the right it brings up options corresponding to the radio one more thing with the radio is that these buttons up here one to eight are your top eight presets there's different ways to hold, uh, store presets. You can either hold this button down on the channel, it'll store it to the next available preset. If you want it to be specifically one of these buttons, you just hold that button down 
when you're on that channel. It'll store it as a preset. The other way is if you're on a channel and you go into your options menu, you can click store as preset. Now the car will hold up to 50 presets and to access those, you just go up to the preset screen here. And then you can also use this to store new stations as well. So we'll set this back to Sirius XM. And like I said, you get a three month free trial of Sirius XM anytime you buy a newer pre-owned vehicle from us. When I go into media here, best thing to know about the media screen is if you're on Bluetooth, it'll ask you to connect uh, your Bluetooth audio player and we'll walk you through that just like the phone screen. If you slide the wheel to the left here, it gives you different options for your media sources like CDs and DVDs, SD cards, and USB ports. In the phone screen, once your phone is connected, it'll allow you to search your contacts and your previous calls. And then in the navigation, navigation and map screen, if you're on the map, like you can slide the wheel to the left. It'll give you a menu related to the map. Slide to the right, it gives you options related to the map. If we go into the navigation screen now, I'll show you anytime you have a search box here. Uh, primarily, I guess you would use this for navigation. You have three different ways to enter the information here. You can either write on this touchpad one letter at a time. So you do four, seven, two, and then whatever you would just keep writing. If you need a space, you swipe to the right, gives you a uh, space. Backspace is swipe to the left, that'll delete. If you click on the wheel, it brings up a keyboard here for you. And then the other way, which I find is the easiest, is just click on the prompt here and you would say take me to and then just say the address the car will give you options and you can use your voice to select the option and then navigate to that address that also works if you say uh, like something like call John it'll if there's a John in your in your contacts on your phone when your phone's connected it will then call John in here you can store your home address and then underneath here anytime you put an address in it'll get saved under the last destinations and then you would be able to scroll down through this list and just click on the destination. That's if uh, maybe you travel somewhere frequently, frequently and would like to uh, just access that quickly without having to type it in all the way again. Also, I'll mention there's a menu button. If you click on this, this gives you access to a few more additional things other than what I just covered. One is a vehicle. This will bring up your drive select screen. If you slide your wheel to the left or press the left button, it will bring up your menu where you have access to drive select, your vehicle settings, your driver's assistance settings, which would be things like your parking sensors, your blind spot, and the pre-sense. Air conditioning is just air recirculation. And then service and checks, that allows you to reset your tire pressure. It allows you to put the wipers into the change position, which just pulls them up. That way you can pull them off the windshield and it also allows you to check your oil level because there's no, uh, no dipstick in the car. Then also from the menu, you have your sound settings here for everything, not just your, not just your music, but like your navigation, uh, like when the car talks to you, those, those types of sound settings. Your radio brings up your radio screen, media, phone, navigation, and map we just covered. Audi Connect, this is where your six month free trial comes in. Within the car here, this is already set up as well. You have news, weather, fuel prices, parking information. You can also search city events, travel information, flight information. Traffic sign uh, information is available in some cities, um, not around where we are here. And you can also uh, actually set your navigation to display a satellite map, which is pretty cool. Next thing is the Audi smartphone interface. When you plug in your Apple uh, device or your Android device, this will turn into either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It'll actually the car will actually walk you through pretty much setting that up as well. So anytime your phone's plugged in, that'll pretty much just pop up automatically here on the screen. What that does is it gives you a, an interface similar to an iPhone or a Android device that you can then uh, use this wheel down here to operate the interface, which is pretty cool. 
last thing in the menu is just your settings here. That's just general settings if you want to change date and time, things like that. Um, lastly, up top here is a bunch of different controls. It's kind of hard to see. So your reading lights, you just touch these on and off. This big switch here is for the roof, the glass itself. Smaller switch is for the shade. This button turns on all your lights. This button opens up. This is a emergency call function. You got the button to whether you want the lights to turn on when you open the doors or not. And a button here to contact Addy's roadside assistance. And the black circles are microphones, so don't press on those. And that is pretty much everything in the car. Now there are a lot of settings that you can change, which I won't get into because there, uh, there's a lot of a lot of lot of settings that you can change related to all different systems in the car. But uh, this is a pretty awesome car. Sounds good, and it's fun to drive.